اللهم صل على الحبيب محمد يا رب صل عليه وسلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك ولعظيم سلطانك سبحانك لا نحصي ثناء عليك أنت كما ثنيت على نفسك وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتري لولا أن هدانا الله الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعله إوجا الحمد لله رب العالمين All praises due to Allah who has blessed us to gather here who has blessed us with the Quran who has blessed us with the articulation of the Quran through our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah, Shaykh Hassan just recited very beautifully moving words from the Book of Allah. I'lamu anma al-hayatu dunya la'ibun wa lahwun wa zina. You should know that the life of this world is none other than play and amusement and adornment. In other words, things that can potentially and will definitely, if, if one isn't mindful of one's primary purpose in this world, which is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Then those things will be a distraction from that great reality of who we are as Shaykh Khalil just mentioned. Remember who you are. I like to, when I talk to the children sometimes because they all saw it, not that I encourage people to watch Disney movies, but I know usually they all, they've all seen The Lion King. The Hakuna Matata for the rest of my days. It's my trouble free. Philosophy, Hakuna Matata. <laughs> and so I ask, what, what is the turning point? So Simba is just, he's Hakuna Matata wing, if you can make Hakuna Matata into a verb. So he's just Hakuna Matata for the rest of his days. He's chilling like a villain in the pond with Timon and Pumbaa his new found friends, while the kingdom is being destroyed. So I ask, you know, what's the turning point? What, what snaps Simba out of it and makes him realize that he's the new king and he has a responsibility to save the kingdom? And usually they'll say when he sees his father, so he sees his father re reflected in the pond, the sky reflected in the pond, and he tells him, Simba, remember who you are. And then Simba snaps out of it. And I think one of the reasons that not just our young folks, the children and youth, but even the older folks, we fall into these funks, and the, into a malaise, and we get trapped up and wrapped up in the dunya. So Simba, he was trapped up in the dunya. It's nice. Lions don't swim, but he's out there swimming and he's eating his slimy and satisfying grubs and he's just hanging out with his friends. So he's wrapped up in the world and the pleasures of the world and he forgets who he is. He's, he forgets he's the king. And he forgets that the kingdom is in desperate trouble that is being taken over and is being destroyed. And so he races back and he saves the kingdom. As Muslims, we forget who we are. We forget who we are. Men and women. Allah tells the women, when the Prophet's wives, they start haranguing him and hassling him, 
about the dunya. What does Allah reveal? Ya nisa and Nabi lastunna ka ahadam min an nisa. O wives of the Prophet, you're not like other women. O Muslims, you're not like other people. They're the people of the world. And we're supposed to be the people of the Akhirah. We live in the world. We have responsibilities in the world. We seek justice in the world. But not at the sake of our very soul. Not at the sake of our very soul. It's mentioned in the Bible. I came out of, from a Christian family, so I can quote the Bible. <laughs> you can excuse me. But one of the verses in the Bible, what profits, is a, what profits a man if he gains the world but he loses his very soul? If these fools who are fighting in Iraq and Syria and murdering each other and competing in atrocities, what, what, is, what if they gain Syria or they gain Iraq or they gain Yemen or they gain one of these other plots of dirt but they lose their soul? Because they, they slaughtered a Muslim. They slaughtered one who said, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Which is general. What does the dirt mean? What does the power mean? What does the authority mean? When the reality sinks in that it wasn't about the world, it wasn't about controlling this or that plot of land. It was about obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Staying within the limits set by Allah. Tilka hududullah. Fala ta'atuduha. Fala taqrabuha. These are the limits set by Allah. Don't violate them. Don't even approach them. And then the reality sets in. So you got Saddam's old treasure. Right? The treasury was looted. Or you looted a museum and you got some priceless piece. Or you went in like these people going into Tikrit and you got someone's television out of their house. Or you got uh, their bicycle. Or you got their car. What does it mean? And you think it's yours. And you forgot that it belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قُلِ اللَّهُمَّ مَالِكَ الْمُلْكِ Everything, all of the dominion is for Allah. تُتُ الْمُلْقَ مَنْ تَشَاء وَتَنْزِعُ الْمُلْقَ مِنْ مَنْ تَشَاء وَتُعِزُ مَنْ تَشَاء وَتُذِلُّ مَنْ تَشَاء بِيَدِكَ الْخَيْرِ إِنَّكَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ Allah has, it's for Allah. He gives it and He takes it. Based on whom He's pleased with. Not based on how many people they can murder or slaughter how many rights they can trample on, how much property can be usurped. Forget that that doesn't bring victory. Masquering innocent people doesn't bring victory. Trampling on the, the rights of other human beings and Muslims doesn't bring victory. Controlling this or that piece of land doesn't bring victory. وَمَنْ نَصْرُ إِلَّا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ نَصْرُ إِلَّا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ Victory only comes from Allah. So if we think if I can do something more desperate, if I can try a little harder, if I can murder a little more viciously, if I can broadcast it all over the world to strike fear into the hearts of people, I'll help bring victory. No, you'll bring the scorn of the nations. You'll bring the hatred of the nations. You'll bring the contempt of the nations. You'll bring the wrath of the nation and the wrath of Almighty God down upon you. And that's what we see happening. You could call it whatever you want to call it. But that's what's happening. And we have to take a stand. We have to remember Allah Ta'ala created us for something better than that. So you get the dirt and you get the land and you get the power and you get the authority. But you got it by violating the rights that Allah said, don't approach, don't come near. And then what awaits you? مَا أَغْنَى عَنِّي مَالِيَا 
هلك عني سلطانية خذوه فغلوا ثم الجهيم صلوا My, my wealth is gone. What you looted or pillaged is gone. Ma aghna anni maliya. It's of no benefit. Halaka anni sultaniya. And my power, my authority, my standing before the people is gone. Now I have to meet Allah based on what I sent forward for my soul. Don't be deceived, brothers and sisters. Don't be deceived by the world. Ilamu Annam al Hayatu Dunya Laib. It's just play. In other words, it makes you like a child. What does a child want to do? A child wants to play all day. And one of the reasons if you're not familiar, go get a book by Dr. Leonard Sachs, S-A-X, like saxophone. Not E, A. Dr. Leonard Sachs. Boys Adrift. And how our boys are being caught up in a cycle of perpetual adolescence. Not able to grow up and assume the responsibilities of being a man. He's not a Muslim. So if you're like, wow, that sounds like my 25-year-old. <laughs> it's widespread. It's being in encouraged. Because as long as we play, someone's making money. As long as we play, someone's making money. Because the things we play with aren't free. The places we play aren't free. They have a mission charge. You have to get a, a membership to the gym. You have to pay to go to Chuck E. Cheese's. When I grew up, we didn't have Chuck E. Cheese. We had the backyard. <laughs> it was better for the imagination, stimulating the imagination. You have to pay to play, right? They even say you have to pay to play. Someone's, so the longer you can keep a person in a childlike state of play, the more money someone can make. This is the nature of our time. And this is the nature of the world. But Islam tells us to grow up. Islam tells us to grow up. Because you're created for more than play. But play is children, and they run around and run around and they get tired. And it's good exercise, it's healthy, but nothing constructive. Play doesn't result in anything constructive. Yes, it builds character, physical fitness, etc. But play doesn't, doesn't organize the world. Play doesn't build institutions. Play doesn't challenge injustices in lawful ways. So it makes you tired. That's the world. Walahun. Walahu. Just amusement. Which just wasting time. Wasting time. So play we engage in our body. Lahu we engage with our mind. So we just amuse ourselves to death. Lahu is television. Hour after hour after hour after hour. And we leave it, we've just wasted time. And all these other things that are put out there to waste our time. Wazina, wazinatun. Just adorning ourselves and adorning things. We fix up our house, we fix up our car. And I hope Muslims don't do it, but we really fix, some people really fix up their car. And it's Zena, just adorn it. They get 25 inch spinning rims. And they get a bobblehead dog in the back window. <laughs> and, and 
you know, and they put little things on it, get a customized license plate, my car. You know, most people figured that out, you're driving it. <laughs> Would you want to put an exclamation on it? My car. Get little feathery things painted on the back and the sides. Xena. And then it just, you get a dent here and then you're ready to shoot the guy. After the first dent, eh, poof. Yo, man, what you doing? Did you see me coming? Then after the second dent, you won't shoot him ready to strangle him. And after the third dent, you don't even care anymore because you finally figured out it's just a car. It's made out of metal. I'm driving. I'm bound to bump into things. That's the nature of cars and driving. And then after the sixth, seventh, eighth dent, you're ready to send it to the scrapyard. And you say, Alhamdulillah, I didn't shoot that guy over this piece of junk. That's the world. Man dallaka ala al-amali qad at'abaka. The one who, who encourages you to just act. They've made you tired. Wa man dallaka ala dunya faqad ghashaka. Whoever directs you to the world, you know, get, get a bigger house, get a faster car, get some new shoes. Some of you remember a, a singing group, Tower of Power. They don't make like, I never heard of Tower of Power. <laughs> you either try to make believe you never listen to music or you're not that old. But see, I had an excuse. I wasn't a Muslim when I was listening to Tower of Power. <laughs> But they say you done started to let your hair grow. You're spending big bucks on your wardrobe. You've been hanging out with the so-called hippie set. But while you search for the right road, there's one thing you should know. What's hip today just might become passe. Do you chasing it today, then it's out of style tomorrow. So one who encourages you to get wrapped up in that lifestyle has betrayed you. مَنْ دَلَّكَ عَلَى الدُّنْيَا فَقَدْ غَشَّكَ وَمَنْ دَلَّكَ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَقَدْ نَصَحَكَ And whoever orients you towards Allah, that's the one who's giving you sincere advice. Because we're in this world to worship Allah, not to chase the dunya. We're in this world to worship Allah, not to chase power. We're in this world to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have only created the jinn and the humans to worship me. That's what we're in this world. As Ibn Abbas said, إِلَّا to know me. That's why we're in this world, brothers and sisters. Everything else is an illusion. Everything else is a delusion. And a function of our worship of Allah and a function of our knowing Allah is knowing the rights that all other human beings have on, uh, over us. So we're not saying we run away from the world, but we understand we're prisoners in the world. At dunya sijnul mu'min wa jannatul kafir. So what's one meaning of that? When you're in prison, you don't do what you want, when you want, how you want. You do what the warden wants. When the warden wants, how the warden wants, when the warden wants. And as a prisoner in this world, the believer does what Allah Ta'ala wants, the ultimate warden. When Allah Ta'ala wants, how Allah Ta'ala wants. In Ramadan, we don't eat what we want, even if it's lawful. We don't eat when we want. We eat when Allah wants us to eat. We drink when Allah wants us to drink. We don't pray, we don't just stand up. And I think today I hold my hands up here because I always did my thing. So I'm a Muslim now, so I'm going to do my thing. Everyone holding their hands here. I'm going to put mine up here because that's what I want to do. No, Islam takes the eye out of the equation. And he replaces it with what he wants us to do. Not what I want to do. 
and that's ubudiyah. May Allah give us tawfiq. She says the world is, is play. It will tire you out. It's, it's amusement. It will cause you to waste your time and have nothing fruitful in the end to show for it. It's zina. It will cause you to seek to adorn and adorn with no, no end and no benefit. And we can adorn for an end and for a benefit. But, but we can also become just narcissistic. We can adorn just out of our love for ourselves. We can adorn out of our hedonism, just seeking pleasure and taking pleasure and delight in, in the adornment and then just throw it away when we realize just how cheap and empty it is. And boasting about how much you've adorned, how much you've gained, how much you've earned, how many people you killed. I was reading an article today about some ISIS people. Uh, what a, what a, why would a, a Muslim group name themselves after an Egyptian idol? Or after they murdered after they murdered someone who was probably she, they were high-fiving each other and boasting, you know, we killed them. And now, now the she are murdering them. That's the Islamic state. No, that's the pathetic state some Muslims are in. And we'll be in that state as long as we're trapped in this dunya. As long as all of our sights, they're just set on the dunya. Retribution in the world. Well, they did it to us, we'll do it to them. As uh, Sheikh Khalil mentioned, I wasn't here for Sheikh Yasser's talk, so I can't quote him. But I called Sheikh Khalil. They're not our teachers. They're not our teachers. These are the days when we have to rise higher at a spiritual lane because these are the days where, relatively speaking, Muslims have never controlled less of the dunya. So if we make the dunya our greatest concern, our prophet is wise, and he was shown what would be, and he knew a day would come where the prayer he taught us would never have more meaning than it does today. Allahumma la taj'al dunya akbar hammina wa la mablagha ilmina. Oh Allah, don't make this world our greatest concern nor the extent of our knowledge. Don't make this world our greatest concern nor the extent of our knowledge. Give us knowledge of the akhirah. Give us a concern of the akhirah. Give us the concern of the state of our soul when we stand before you. Give us, give us a concern greater than the, all the wherewithal of this world. This is the time for Muslims to stand up and say, we indeed are relatively powerless from a geostrategic point of view. We don't have the nuclear bombs. We don't have the delivery system. We don't have the submarines. In other words, we can't kill people as effectively as you can. And any fool who thinks otherwise will soon come to know the bitter reality of that statement. We can't kill people as efficiently as you, as you can. We cannot cause death as effectively as you can cause death. But Allah sent us to bring life, not to bring death. You can bring death. You can do it very well. You have nuclear bombs. You're developing, and they are developing, electromagnetic magnetic 
wave bombs beaming an electromagnetic beam down from a satellite to scramble the brains of entire populations. That's where it's headed. Muslim, take it. We are here to rectify and reform people's hearts, to uplift their souls, to give meaning and purpose to their life. Because death and murder and mayhem is not a reason to live. It's not a reason to live. I was reading a Reuters, Reuters, two guys in Tikrit when the Shia militia comes through and it, they capture an Egyptian say he's Daesh we're going to do to him what he did to our commander he killed our commander they killed our commander and the Reuters reporter said when they pulled him and so the Iraqi police are trying to get him out in the back of a pickup truck with a Sudanese guy And the mob pulls him out of the truck. And they start pounding knives into his neck. And they cut his head off, but it's dangling by the skin. And they try to rig him up on a telephone pole. And he said, when they pulled him out of the truck, he could see the, they could see the fear. The fear in his, in his face. That's where it ended up. But when he was probably doing that to some Shia or some innocent civilian, when they took the town and massacred thousands of people, hundreds for sure, if not thousands, he was probably one of the people high-fiving and, and, and reveling in jingoistic delusion with no fear but that's how it ended that's the world it's a delusion time's up so we we'll skip to the end of the verse what is the life of this world except a, a deceptive enjoyment how does it deceive us we think it's going to last forever we think that this is all there is we might talk about the akhirah, but in this materialistic world, in our hearts of hearts, we can't see it, we can't feel it, many of us. It's an intellectual construct. It's not an internalized reality. And that's where the amusement and the sport and the play, that's where it leads. Everything becomes a fantasy. Everything becomes a game. Well, hell is real and heaven is real. And when a person internalizes the reality of heaven, they work for it with all of their might and all of their heart and all of their soul. And when they internalize the reality of hell, they try to avoid it with all of their might and all of their heart and all of their soul. And this is what Islam is all about. It's about elevating us spiritually so that the realities of the next life are more real than what we see in this life. Because those things endure. This world fades. كُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَ وَيَبْقَ وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ It's all perishing. Only the reality of Allah remains. May Allah Ta'ala bless us through the Qur'an to get in touch with that reality to be moved by that reality, to be inspired and uplifted by that reality and not to be deceived by the world, not to think this is all there is, to understand there's more. This is only the beginning. This is only the beginning. There's more, more, much, much more to come. Don't be deceived to thinking it'll last forever. This world lasts forever. This world has a, it has a lifespan. We have a lifespan. Our life doesn't last forever. Uh, very quickly when he says, كَمَثَلِ غَيْثًا عَجَبَ الْكُفَّارَ نَبَاتُ ثُمَّ يَهِيجْ ثُمَّ يَكُونْ حُطَامًا 
It's, it's like a, a rain, a copious rain. The vegetation it brings forth, it amazes the, the tiller. Or some of the exegetes say it amazes one who's rejected belief in Allah. Because they think the dunya, uh, this dunya is amazing. Forget the akhirah. This is, this is incredible. As if they brought the rain. As if they germinated the seed. As if they decreed that it would grow. How many seeds are thrown in the, thrown in the ground and nothing comes forth? The believer is not amazed by the nabat, by the plants and vegetation. The believer is amazed by Allah. Look what Allah can do from a little seed and some water and dirt. Allahu Akbar, subhanallah. But it's also the likeness going that this world doesn't last, but we don't last forever. So the vegetation is green and lush and soft. And when we come into the world, our bones, they're rubbery, right? The baby, the rubbery bones and soft. And the baby skin is soft. And then it grows up strong. So our bones are strong and the stalks of the plant, the wheat, the sugar cane, whatever, is strong and is vibrant. Then it turns yellow and it gets brittle. And then our bones, they get brittle. We're afraid to fall when we get over 60 years old. I might break my hip because my bones are brittle. And then it's just disintegrates and it's blown away by the wind. And then we disintegrate in the graves. And there's nothing to be seen. This is an example, it's a parable. May Allah bless us to heed. Allah barik fikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.